Hi, my name is Naomi Nadara, and this year is being given the Eli Nishmat Sarah Rivka Bat Rav Nachum Umindel Sarah Lam Drach, who was a wonderful friend to so many people and greatly missed by all of us. I am going to be talking about Parak Sadik Aleph, which is a 91st Parak in Tehillim, and um, it's a very special parak, and I think that it's a parak that many of us are very familiar with. It begins with the words Yoshev Beseter Elyon, and it is said nightly in Kriyat Shema Hamita. We also repeat it on uh, during davening and Shacharit and Shabbos, and we even say this parak at the end of life during the kavura of a person. And it seems like it's a parak many of us even know by heart. It seems very basic and simple, and yet there's great depth to the meaning of it. Um, it's, as I said, it was the 91st parak, and in Gematria, 91 is equivalent to the word malach. Actually, when my own sister, Allah Shalom, was very ill and facing difficult surgery, a dear relative recommended to me that I say this parak 91 times, and it would create a malach, perhaps, hopefully. In any event, I did say it 91 times, and by going through that experience, it had a tremendous impact on me, and that's another reason why I chose this parak to talk about, to look into a little bit and learn more about. Um, to look back, one parak, parak sadik, is uh, begins with the words tefillah l'Moshe Isha Elokim, and it's attributed to Moshe Rabbeinu, as well, according to Rashi and Radak, as well as the next ten parakim, in total eleven parakim, which were parallel to the, the eleven Shabbatim that Moshe Rabbeinu gave bracha to in Sefer Devarim. This parak, then, according to that explanation, is given, is spoken about um, and parallel to Shevet Levi, that was the members of which were so close to Hashem uh, because they were so involved with the Avodah Hashem in the Mishkan and obviously later in the Beit HaMikdash. Moshe Rabbeinu was telling us, according to Rashi, that if we put our faith and Amuna totally in Hashem, He will completely protect us in, every, in all ways. And he's teaching us a very, very important lesson. Um, I'd like to just look through the psukim and share the meaning with you, and then perhaps touch upon a little bit deeper meaning to conclude. Yoshe Beseter Elyon Betzel Shadayit Lonan. He who dwells in the hiddenness of the Most High Elyon, he will lodge in the shadow of Hakadosh Baruch Hu. There's a parallel almost in many of the psukim in this parak where you see there's a statement in the beginning and then subsequently there's another statement that seems to finish or complete the idea that's being stated. Here, the Malbim explains that Yoshe Buseta Elyon refers to the nefesh of a person that attaches itself to a Kodesh Baruch Hu. And the B'tseel Shaddai Yitlonan refers to his guf and Hashem's protection of the person himself physically. Omer Lashem Machsi Masudati Elokai Tachbo. I said of Hashem, He is my shelter and He is my fortress. Elokai, my God, Evtachbo, and I trust in Him. The next passage Kihu Yatsilcha Mi Pachyakush, because He will save you from the trap that ensnares. Mi Deber Havot from the devastating pestilence. One, the trap refers to surprise, you know, surprise destruction or, or attempt at destruction by enemies. A trap happens, you don't know what's there, and suddenly it's there in your life. Sometimes things happen, we don't anticipate them, and that's, they are, we need the protection of Hashem for those times. The pestilence, the illness, refers to natural disasters that occur in this world. So in both ways, Hashem is always protecting the righteous person. And with his wing, he will cover you. And under his wing, he will, you will take refuge. Tzina v'sokhera represents shields that surround the person and protect them on all sides. Amito comes from the word emet, which reflects, which refers to Torah, that if you Put your, spend your life learning Torah and put your trust totally in HaKadosh Baruch Hu. He will protect you as if there's a shield surrounding you always and a wing protecting you. 
And this image of the wing is so reminiscent of the Megillah that we just read, Megillah Rut on Shavuot, where if we look for a moment, where Boaz meets Rut in his fields, and what does he say to her? He says, Yishalem Hashem ha'alech utihi maskurotech shlema me'im Hashem elokei Yisrael asher bat lachasot tachat kenafav. This is in Parak Bet, Pasuk Yud Bet. I'm sorry I didn't mention that. Lachsot tachat kenafav. You, Rut, have come to be sheltered under the wings of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And Hashem will repay you for everything you've done in this way. You've taken refuge. The Ramban reminds us that we are commanded to particularly love the Ger, who is Niknas Tacha Kanfei Again, that mention of Tacha Kanfei The Maharal tells us in the Sivos Olam, the Siva Chesed, chapter one, that wings are symbolic for reaching great heights, and that just as a bird soars upwards, there are actually wings in the world, and a person who looks at this world and appreciates the presence and wisdom of Hakadosh Baruch Hu in this world can reach great heights. Rut, who was doing such wonder, an unbelievable chesed for, his, for her mother-in-law and demonstrating such absolute bitachem, was able to reach the great height of such closeness to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, that she was resting under the wings of HaKadosh Baruch Hu and sheltered by them. What does Rut later say to Boaz? Later on when she comes to him at night on the threshing floor, she says to him, Anochi rut amatecha, uparasa knefecha al amatcha ki goelata. Again, the mention of wings. I am your handmaid, rut. Spread your wing over your handmaid, for you are the redeemer. What is she saying to Boaz? She's saying, emulate HaKadosh Baruch Hu. You said he protected me with his wings. Now you do that. Take the steps you need to take. The image is so beautiful and so meaningful to all of us. Going back to the parak, there are several psukim that describe exactly what this means and how it impacts on the righteous person. Pasuk hey, lo tirami pachad laila, do not fear from the fear of night altogether. Omei chesi of your mom from an arrow that shoots forth in the day when you can't anticipate it. Midever ba'ofal yahaloch, miketev yashud saharayim. Those are also the pestilence that prowls in the darkness and the destruction that ravages at noon. A thousand, what are a thousand? A thousand angels, a thousand warriors. We don't know exactly who the thousand is, but a thousand will be stationed at your side and 10,000 at your right hand. But it, meaning the danger, will not, the tzara will not approach you, will not reach you. And then we get to Pasuk, Rak be'enecha tabit. Just with your eyes, you will look. You will see. Vishilumat rishaim tereh. You will see the wicked get there, as they will be punished. You will see the annihilation of the wicked. What does this sound like to me? It's Yitziat Mitzrayim. It's so reminiscent of Yitziat Mitzrayim and Shmot, Perak Yud Dalit, Pasuk Yud Gimel. It says, Vayomo Moshe el ha'am, al tira'u hit yatsvu ru'u et yeshuat Hashem asher yasel lachem hayom. What does that mean? Do not be afraid, stand fast, and you will see the Yeshua, the salvation of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, that he will do for you today. Ki re'itam et Mitzrayim hayom, lo to sifu l'rotam od an olam. The way you see them now, the Mitzrayim, you will not see them again forever like this. I will do battle for you, says Hashem, and you will be silent. This sense of being silent, of standing still, is very much a part of the first half of this parak in Tehillim. And then we get to Pasuk Tet. And Pasuk Tet says, Ki Hashem machsi. You, God, you are my refuge. Elyon Santa Maonecha high up, above, you have made your dwelling. It's a little bit confusing who this is referring to, and different Mepharshim have different explanations. But perhaps we can say that the person is saying, God, I've made you my refuge, and I am safe in the Elyon. Lo tu'unei lecha ra'a v'nega lo yikrab o halecha. 
No harm will befall you, and no plague will draw near your ohel, your tent, which refers to your children, your wife, your family. You will be protected. Because Hashem will, will command angels to stay by your side and watch you in all of your ways. And now we talk about the things that you will do. You will go. I don't think it's... And the Mepharshim explained that the first half is passive. There's more action in the second half of this, of this parak. On their hands, these angels will carry you. So that your foot will not stumble on the rock. On a young lion and a cobra, you will tread. You will trample the young lion and the serpent. Here, Hashem is talking about how you will do these references to animals refer to your enemies, that you will tread upon them and you will trample them, but they will not be able to harm you. Because you have yearned for me, and I will save you. I shall, I shall fortify him, this person, because he knows my name. Knows my name. Look at the next pasuk. Tetbab yikra'ini ba'anehu. You will call me, and I shall answer him. Imo anochi b'tzara. I will be with him in all tzara. Achal seyav achabdehu. I shall rescue him, and not only shall I rescue him, achabdehu. I will bring him honor among men. And finally, Hashem says, O yamim aspiehu. I will satisfy, satiate him with longevity. And then at the end of time, I will show him my Yeshua by giving his neshama, the Yeshua, the Olam, forever. This is the definition, according to many Mephashim, and yet there's so much confusion in this parak because what we notice is that the pronouns keep changing. It's I, he, you, and so I found a beautiful explanation given by Rav Elchanan Samet, just looking for it. And he presents an in-depth study of the structure of this parak. What he explains is that the subject is clear, and the subject is described in the very first pasuk of Yosheh Vesetar Elyon, B'Sel Shadayit Nam, which means that a person's trust in Hashem, as he develops that trust, is... is um, Replay, is repaid with kindness and protection from Hashem. That's the theme of the whole parak. But who is speaking in this parak? It's so confusing. So he breaks the parak up, and he says, first of all, that it appears that there's a dialogue between people in this parak. It's a very unusual structure for um, a parak and Tehillim. There are a few, but here there are actually more than even two voices. There appears to be a drama going on with three voices, maybe a fourth, but certainly three. And it appears that there's a relationship between the, the narrator or the speaker and the person who responds, who's listening. And then at the end, there's a whole piece where Hashem is speaking himself. He says that because of his sense of the relationship going on here, it's probably or possibly a teacher and a student, a father and a son. We don't really know. But... That's, that's the kind of relationship that is reflected. Very, past the very first Pasuk and Pasuk Bet, this person is saying, Omar Hashem, I say of Hashem, not to Hashem, but of Hashem, that he is my Maxi and my Mitsudati, he's my fortress and my shelter. And then the person listening, the younger person, this may perhaps the son or the student says, El of Tachbo. He's my God, I will believe in him. And then the teacher goes on to explain all of the ways in which Hashem will protect this person. It goes on from Pasuk Gimel all the way through Pasuk Chet. And finally in Pasuk Tet, the listener, the younger person, possibly the student, responds. And he says, Ki ata Hashem machsi. He exclaims, Hashem is my refuge. To which the person speaking to him answers, Elyon Samta Meonecha. Yes, that's true. You made Elyon the high above your dwelling. Your dwelling. You connected to Akadash Baruch Hu. And then, Pasuk, the end of Pasuk Tet, through Pasuk Yigimel, again, 
This person is speaking and explaining to the student, the son, all the ways in which Hashem will protect him now that his emunah on Hashem is even further developed and stronger because he truly understands the depth of the importance of having bitachon in Hashem. And finally, Pasuk Yodalet Hashem speaks. And now the, te- the, the pronoun again changes and you could hear Hashem is saying, because he has faith in me. Therefore, because he knows my name, therefore I will do all these things for him. I will be with him in Sarah. I will help him and save him. And so I hope that some of this, this, um, these different mafrashim have been able to give you a sense of the beauty of this parak. And I wish you a wonderful day.